Hello and welcome to my Blueprint Settings Menu tutorial. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is migrate the Blueprint Settings Menu folder to your own project. So once you downloaded this from the marketplace, then here in the content browser, you see the BSM minimalist. And what you're going to do is right click it, hit migrate. It will select all of the assets of this product. You could just hit okay. And then you go ahead and find your own folder for your game then open up your folder and select the content folder and in here you want to press select folder then you get the message content migration completed and that's how to get the blueprint settings menu into your project from there you can go ahead and open your own project up and then when we put this to full screen and click this little button here on the left then you will see that you will now have the blueprint settings menu inside of your content browser so uh, if we open this folder up we see the demo folder here and then we can go to the demo maps to the demo level and inside of this level we use this widget blueprint demo and if we hit play then what we see is that while I'm using the third person example project here, so that's why we get this character, but we get this button and this button can toggle our settings menu. So here we have all of the video settings and it will go down to advanced settings. Then here we have all of the audio settings and here we have all of the control settings. So the first thing I want to talk about is that in the product we have included three themes. So theme one is pre-installed. It's the one you just saw. Now with theme two, it's a bit of a darker theme and theme three. So uh, the way to hook this up to your projects is actually very simple. So let me show you how I did it here in the demo. If I go to widgets from the demo and open up the demo widget, then if we go to the event graph here, then you will see that we simply have this node here. So create widget blueprint, add it to the viewport. And then here in the create widget node, you simply select the widget here and type in settings panel. And then here you get the three specific teams. So team one is pre-installed. You can also call team two. So hit team two, hit play. And then you will see that if you press the button, you will get team two. So there you go. And if you want to use team three, then that's possible as well, of course. So if you type in settings panel, then you can get team three here. And then if you hit play, hit the button, then you will see team three. All right, so that's how you can uh, use different teams in your project. What I recommend is that uh, since most games only use one type of settings panel, that you will choose your settings panel and then basically uh, delete all the unnecessary assets. So let's say that you choose team one, which is this one, the pre-installed one. Then what I recommend is that you can actually at this point go into assets here and then delete the assets for team two and three. What you can then also do is if you go into the widget folder, into core, you can delete team two and three. And into settings, you can also delete settings panel two and three. And uh, once you're completely done and you have installed the settings menu into your project, then what I also recommend is deleting the demo folder since you will no longer require it. All right, uh, then a couple of things to understand about the settings menu. If we hit play here while we are in the editor and then click on the settings menu, then the apply button is always going to be prompting here. So if I hit apply, then it will be gone. But basically every time I start it, it will be here. And that is because um, the settings menu recognizes that we are at a weird resolution. So when you play an editor like this in a pie window, it's none of the common resolution. So it recognizes dirty settings and that's why the apply my button is here. When you actually install the settings menu into your game, that will no longer happen and the apply button will only appear when you actually have dirty settings. So dirty settings mean unsaved settings. Okay, then let's go over some of the basics of the product. So the first thing I want to talk about is making the actual audio settings work. So we click here and go to audio. Then we have these audio sliders and these are the ones that I have chosen for the project. So music, ambient, SFX and volume. So let's talk about how to make that work. The first thing you're going to have to do is that inside of the demo folder in blueprints, we have a demo game instance. You have your own game instance for your game, of course. And what you want to do there is on event init, which means event initializes the first event that happens when the game starts up. So you can simply select this code and then control C and control V it into your game instance. Uh, then once you have this installed into your game instance, as it says here, double click this function, and then you have to set your sound mix modifier and sound class references. So if you open up this function, this is a function from a, a function library. So here 
inside of the blueprint, we have this function library that comes with the product. And inside of this function library, we have this one function that loads your audio settings. And what you have to do here is make sure that you hook up your sound mix class in each one of these and also mix up the corresponding sound class. So if you have a sound class for master, music, ambient, SFX, and UI, then hook up the corresponding sound classes here to the corresponding volumes. Uh, the second place that you want to do that and the last place that we have to modify is that if you go into the widget folder into settings and then into the theme that you have selected then you go to the graph here and then if we go to the and then if we go to the event graph then what we see here on the top is another orange part here that says make sure that these variables are set with your own sound class and set sound mix class so what you can also click is the default button here and scroll down so here you will see these variables so uh, click every single variable one by one and set your sound mix class and then set your sound class here as well and then once this sound mix modifier class and the sound classes have been set, then the last place that you want to set these sound classes is inside of your project settings under audio here. Here you are also going to want to set your own sound class master class and here your own sound class master class. And here you want to set your base sound mix class. All right, once you've made all those configurations, then the settings panel is fully functional and your audio settings will also 100% work at that point. Then the last piece of configuration for this product are the controls here. So every project has its own input actions and here you're going to want to set up your own input actions in their own categories as well. What you could also do is make a subdivision here so that you would have a keyboard input actions and then for instance a gamepad section as well. So let me quickly go over how you would do that. If you navigate to the widget folder, go to settings, select the theme that you're using then make sure that here in the hierarchy panel you close these panels here just like this then here you will see the video panel which we're currently in the audio panel and then the control panel and here you can set up these controls so uh, if you want to have more different types of categories then select this top border here and then simply go ahead and duplicate it like this then you want to have some padding on the top so here on the top i recommend doing 15 padding and then you could say here would be your movement input and here for instance would be your interaction input something like that uh, then how do you actually set up these inputs here well first of all there's two example inputs right now let's say that you have more movement inputs than just two then over here in the hierarchy panel then go ahead and close this horizontal box here so as you see these horizontal boxes are the ones that the inputs are in so if you want to have more inputs here in the movement section for instance right click the horizontal box here and duplicate it so that it automatically grows like this all right and then let's talk about how to actually put an input action into here so the first thing you have to understand is that you need input actions into in your project settings so if you click on edit go to project settings then over here on the left we have inputs and then here you have action mappings so let's add two as an example so let's do fire input action fire and i will have that add keyboard button one and then we have input action aim for instance and i will have that at keyboard action two all right so we have fire and aim go ahead and copy those so over here the first thing you want to do is simply change the name that the player visually sees so here we want fire and then this one we want to be aim and then here you can simply go ahead and select the widget blueprint key remap and then in here you can also select fire and it automatically shows up button one, which is corresponding. And for aim, we can simply type in aim and it will show button two. If we now compile and save and hit play and test it out, so go to controls, then see that there's one and two, and then I can click it and I can reassign it to any other button that I like. And what you will see is in your project settings, you will also see that Y and K have now been configured here. If it doesn't show up here, the change, you simply have to hit compile, but it is processed in the engine. All right, so that's how you can also control these keys here. All right, then let's talk about some preference settings. So if we click on the settings menu here, then these are what I call option switchers. So we have drop downs and option switchers. These option switchers, they are limited here to the sides by default. So I cannot click further than this and I cannot click further 
than this. But if you do want to allow that you can loop the options, then that's possible too. So select a theme that you want to modify and then simply select uh, one of these option switchers. And then here we have installed a little button called allow option looping. So if you take that one to true, so let's say I do it for the first like tree here, for instance, so this one, true, true, true. Then if we hit play, then you will see that I can then toggle this and go like from low, I can go to epic and from epic, I can go to low. So now we have also got option looping here. And if you want to uh, add more options to these options here, then here in the options array, you can add more options by hitting the plus button. You can also set the pre-selected options. So let's say you want your game to standards uh, be set to ultra then uh, you can also copy ultra, put it in here and you'll see it switch to ultra that you can do that for all of these option switchers. Uh, but I recommend putting it to high because most people's computer are better running at high. All right. And other than that, yeah, the whole settings panel contains all functionality that you expect from a settings panel. So these are all the options that our engine gives you out of the box. And we have basically installed these for you guys because it's a pretty gnarly process to set this up for yourself. So if you enjoyed this, then go check out the product and see you guys later. Bye bye.